Suppose you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're trying to find your way home. Well, it's easy to do if you have this Magellan GPS satellite navigator. It's like having your own satellite receiver. Just point the antenna up into the sky toward the satellite, press the right buttons, and it tells you exactly where on the Earth you are and how to get to where you're trying to go. But suppose it's getting dark and you just want to call home and have them pick you up. Then you need your own satellite uplink, like this NEC satellite phone. Just open up the dish, point it toward the satellite in the sky, turn it on, open the door, take out the phone, and phone home. These are just two of the neat computer gadgets you're going to see on our annual Computer Consumers Buying Guide show. Lots of neat gadgets in store on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard, working with industry leaders to ensure compatibility across the board and across the network. HPPCs, you're looking at partnership in a whole new light. Additional funding is provided by LaserJet printers from Hewlett Packard. Everything from a new color solution to models designed specifically for small businesses. HP LaserJet printers, you do your job, we'll do ours. And the Software Publishers Association. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me today is Tim Baharin, President of Hi. Creative Strategies. Tim, we're looking at all kinds of neat toys and gadgets, computer hardware and software for the season. You're going to start by showing us something called the Interactive Technical Manual for the USS Enterprise. W what is this? This is the first technology that Apple has used with the virtual reality engine, and it's on the Star Trek Enterprise. We're going to go to the guided tour here and just take a quick look of what it looks like to put QuickTime VR in this. We're going to go to the bridge and we're going to actually have a chance to take a look at what it would be like if we were standing on the bridge itself and were able to look around. This is one of the, the aspects of the QuickTime engine that's so unique, that instead of a linear movie, I now have a virtual reality movie, and I can be st looking at it as if I'm standing there. I can zo zoom in, I can turn to the right, turn to the left, and full 360 to see what's going on. And again, this is the Apple QuickTime Virtual Reality Engine that's being applied now to this Star Trek Enterprise Interactive Manual. And it's really an exciting piece of technology that will be established in the, next, in the future and be added to many other products. That's really neat. So you're really in control and you that's can right. walk anywhere you want around the, around the Enterprise. Right. Then. Okay, that's for people who want to play Captain Kirk or Captain Picard, whatever. Some people want to be evil Knievel and risk their lives but not really take a chance on breaking all their bones like he does. If you play lots of action video games, you use a normal joystick like this. Well, that's pretty boring if you're trying to ride a car or a motorcycle. Over there, we have our production assistant, Bev Black, in the simulator action chair. She's actually sitting on the joystick because that's how she's running that motorcycle there. She leans to the left, the bike goes to the left. She leans to the right the bike goes to the right. She's got the button controls in her hands there, but her body is actually doing the most natural thing as if she were on that real motorbike. It's the mo oh, but she doesn't break her bones when she crashes. See, that's <laughs> the beauty of it. That's the simulator action chair, the world's most expensive joystick, but it's really great, $279 huh. from simulator technology. All right, Tim, you're going to be back with us a little bit right. later on. We'll also be joined by Heidi Roizen of T-Maker and Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine for their picks of the best new computer gadgets of the season. Now, we're going to help you decide maybe what to buy today, but how do you decide where to buy it? A mail order house, a superstore, or a neighborhood computer shop? Here's some good advice. Faced with stacks of software, all claiming to be easy to use, and row upon row of look-alike computers, almost any shopper could become dizzy with confusion. That's when computer retailers are meant to step in and help. And even when they do, it's not enough. A lot of our customers come in. They are, uh, in addition to being confused about first-time buying decisions that they have to make about equipment, they actually don't know what software is appropriate for them to use, and once they have it, don't know how to use it as well. Um, a lot of individuals might not even be purchasers of software, but for their job, they are uh, thrown into an environment where they need to learn how to use uh, learn how to use a program very quickly in order to function in their job. The massive CompUSA store in Emeryville, California, has gone so far as to offer classes in software use. Even at $150 per course, the day and evening classes fill up quickly. And CompUSA sees other advantages to its Supercenter stores, 
like size and selection. Taking a different approach are the small individual merchants, like Winner's Circle in neighboring Berkeley, whose owner thinks personal service is more important than a large warehouse. The difference in our store from most of the stores is that we don't have commissioned salespeople. So we have a large tech staff that's able to answer questions from people that are having problems. We'll educate a person that they know nothing about a computer. I think we're able to talk in simple language to explain what it does. There's always going to be a customer that requires hand-holding, and for that customer, our store is ideal because we're going to go out and ha hold their hand. If they're afraid to assemble their computer, we'll go to their place and put it together for them. Buyers intimidated by any kind of store can always order by mail, where the prices are often lower, but the service can be minimal. Computer shoppers are sometimes wary of buying by mail, fearing that once the product is delivered, the support vanishes. But mail order houses say that doesn't necessarily follow. The value of purchasing through us is you get toll-free technical support before the sale or after the sale. We'll be willing to take you through uh, a solution discussion on the phone. As I said earlier, bring in a number of uh, experts, technical experts. And once you make the purchase with us, we offer not only a long-term warranty, but technical support. You call us at any time, any time of the day at 1 o'clock in the morning, and we'll solve your problem for you. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Victoria Smith. Okay, we're back with Tim Baharan, and we're going to take a look at some neat things for Windows machines and PCs, etc. Tim, first thing I want to show you is this. It's Handwriter for Windows from CIC, Communications Intelligence Corporation. It's pen input, handwriting recognition, right. uh, mouse control, anything you want it to be. The main thing I like about this, it comes bundled with a collection of crossword puzzles. And not only crossword puzzles, let me get in here and pick a puzzle. You can do these puzzles and actually write on your board here, and let's see, the question was elevate, so let's guess the answer is lift, and I can just hand write in my answer, and the recognition takes care of it. If I wanted to go five across happy, uh, should we guess glad, and see if that works? Pretty yeah, neat. Nice, yeah. Uh, it's really a lot of fun, and if you have nothing else to do, you spend a lot of time doing these crossword puzzles. Okay, if you don't want to do pen input, and if you're into keyboards, I want to show you one other thing. This is the ultimate ergonomic keyboard from Lexmark. You know the problem of your wrists and all those carpal tunnel problems when you're sure. in this unnatural position? First thing you can do with the Lexmark keyboard is you can see you just split it down the middle. That gives you a straight line from your wrist to your hand, solves one of the problems. You're still at an awkward angle. The next thing you can do with this keyboard is bend it up, crack it right in the middle like that. It looks ridiculous, I know, but try it for a while. It's the most comfortable, <laughs> natural position to type in. When you do this for a while and you go back to that flat position, you realize how much strain you're really putting on your wrists and fingers. That really all the is time. interesting. You've got a couple of neat toys there. What do you got? Tim? Sure. First thing I'm going to show you is the uh, digital recorder from Norris called Flashback. It's in shops right now. Uh, Sharper Image has it for $249. And it's basically got one meg of RAM on this thing and gives you, with this one, for 249, uh, 30 minutes of actual taper wow. time. So what we do is we push the record button and we can actually stop it now and then play it back. We push the record button and we can actually stop it. But what makes this unique is what they have is a PCMCIA IC card clip. Huh. It's compatible with the PCMCI PC card standard. So you could actually, with the adapter, download it as, a, as an actual voice file to your computer. Mm. It's really a neat little product, and because it's not tape, it can go to any place very quickly. That's great. Another product I'm going to show you is the Glide Point from Cirque Corporation. This is now on the shelves for Windows based machines. And this is the similar touchpad that's in the new Macintosh mm -hmm. Power Books. And as you can see on the screen, I can take this and literally very, very fast, take the cursor and move it all over and reposition it. It's one of the most natural inputs for mm -hmm. and, and speedy inputs. But one of the more amazing little products we've come across recently is this. This is from Pentax Corporation, and this is actually a printer. That little thing is a printer. That's right. It's a thermal printer, wow. prints at 300 DPI uh, and three pages per minute. Uh, it's a portable, so it's basically with, that, with batteries, and the actual output is phenomenal. I can actually, with this thermal paper, have full 300 DPI as if I would have on a laser printer. So now, instead of having 
uh, to fax my stuff right. down at a hotel, I can take this little 17 ounce printer wow. with me everywhere on the road. This is 499, just hits the streets this month. Pentax Pocket Jet, that's really cool. Yes. Thanks a lot. Let's go over here and join Heidi Roizen, CEO of Tea Maker Company. Hi, and you have some neat stuff to show us here. What are we going to start with? Well, I'm going to start with Broombook Stratowackia. Okay, so this is it. This is Stratowackia right. over here. And what is. Sounds like violins, music. Stratowackis is fun with music for the early learning audience. What I've started here with is one of the many pages that you can uh, use with the product. And what this one is, is an instrument builder. And uh, obviously we're using some instruments here that you may not normally see. Uh, there are mm -hmm. over a thousand combinations you can come up with. And it's a lot of fun for kids to go yeah. through. Uh, Want to hear what a silly straw might sound like <laughs> as an instrument? Maybe a muffler, a fishbowl. So let's pull something together here. There's actually some pretty complex software here that morphs these together to create an instrument for you. So we're building our instrument right now. And uh, we even considered shipping this product with headphones because we think kids are going to play with this an awful lot. But you can build an instrument. Mm -hmm. And now you're able to hear what that instrument sounds like. And if you really want to drive mom and dad crazy, let's play a little song with it. That is really cool. It's a lot of fun. There are over 40 pages of activity. And uh, it comes for either Windows or Macintosh. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a hybrid CD you can play on either system. Well, what's cool about this, it also comes in different languages, doesn't it? It does. One of the fascinating things about this is it is uh, fully localized into French, Spanish, and German, as well as English. And that's all available on the same CD. In Spanish. Uh huh, uh -huh. absolutely. Okay, absolutely. that's great. Well, are you going to load up uh, Professor Iris for us? And I want right. to show a couple other things while we're waiting for that. Uh, I was just showing a keyboard before for grown-ups who have carpal tunnel problems and all the rest of that stuff at work. This is a keyboard for kids. If you're getting into kids software and you've got a really little kid, tiny fingers can't deal with a regular keyboard, this is just wonderful. The Kids Keys Keyboard, you can see it's all color-coded, big letters for those tiny fingers, gigantic enter key, nice easy cursor keys over here. Plus it has all our adult keys over here, alt, control, delete, etc. If we have to go in and fix up what the, what the kids are doing on the computer, really nice for young kids, say five years and younger, the Kids Keys Keyboard. A couple other quick th things while Heidi is still loading. Two of my favorite sort of holiday gift ideas, Sports Jeopardy, really a lot of fun. If you ever watch Jeopardy, or Jeopardy on TV, this is interactive Jeopardy. Uh, I wasn't really a big TV fan of it, but when you play it, it's a lot of fun around the house. Finally, one of the neatest games I've discovered, which is Glider. I don't know if you ever played this before. Primarily on the Macintosh, this is the newest version, Glider Pro. You make a, take a paper airplane and have to fly through a house using the, the air coming up from the vents in the house. Any kid is absolutely going to be enwrapped by this game. I promise you, I've been through it. All right, what do you have, Heidi? Great. What I'm going to show you now is the first in a series from the Professor Iris series, which is a very popular television show on the Learning Channel. Uh -huh. And uh, Professor Iris is, again, also for the early learning crowd, the kids who may not be able to read yet, may not be comfortable with a keyboard, uh, and they certainly aren't allowed to use the phone to call for tech support. Uh -huh. So it's really got to be something that can, uh, can run easily. And what Professor Iris has is a number of different activities that teaches children about Africa. We're going to go into the series right now. We're starting up on television. You can tell it's from a television yeah. show. So what's cool is the kids can actually watch the series on TV. And when that's done, go over to their Mac or their PC and then sort of take control and continue to have the right. same experience. And it's all the same characters that they're used mm -hmm. to seeing on the TV show. It's got a number of different segments to it. I'm going to skip the introduction. One of the things I think is important to look for in children's software is that there is an introduction that takes children through the program, shows them how to use yeah. it, because of course, they're not able to read. They can't go to the manual right. to figure out how to use it. As you see here on the front page, it's a reading page. And uh, it can read to us. Or let's skip to the index. I think this gives you a good overview of it. There are 10 different reading pages. There are 10 different game pages, all sorts of things like tic-tac-toes and matchups. Mm -hmm. There are places you can learn about reading. There are paint pages. And the last thing, which I think is really fun, is rock videos for the kids set. So let's look at one of these. Just great stuff for kids now. It's a wonderful time to be three years old yeah, or four sure years is. old or it whatever. Yeah, it sure is. You just have to send mom to the store a lot. <laughs> right. Get ready for a music video. So that's Piano, one of the characters of the show. Uh -huh. And now we pull down a video screen. And off we go. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> Professor Iris, Animal Safari. All right, one problem with buying computer software is you're never sure you're really going to like it, or maybe if your kids are going to like it. And it's hard to return software once you've used it. One good alternative is a computer store which will rent software to you. We found one. 
Computer Spectrum is a small, independent store just outside of San Francisco. Neither franchise nor chain store, the shop has still managed to flourish even with giant competitors nearby. Part of the company's successful formula is a CD-ROM rental business. As a small store, we have to do something fairly unique to compete with the larger stores. Uh, we do have, as a small store, we have better customer service. We're more one-on-one -on -one with the client. That only goes so far. Uh, so to, uh, to add to that, we've uh, established a new system of renting CD-ROM titles. We, we sell them and rent them. And it's just like a video store. You go in with a, with a card uh, that you've already signed up, and they rent for $3.99 for three nights. Uh, it's been very popular uh, with the distributors as well because it adds to the selling of the titles. It's kind of a try-before-you-buy philosophy. If you go in and you can try it for three nights, um, I'd say about a quarter of the time they'll come back and they'll actually purchase the title. While Computer Spectrum has made CD-ROM rentals into a routine part of their business, the concept is still new to a lot of smaller publishers of CD titles. In some cases, the retailer has to educate his suppliers in the subtleties of copyright law. In 1990, Congress passed the uh, software, uh, rental, uh, software Rental Act. And uh, you cannot rent software legally except if you have the copyright holder's permission. And so that's what we have to do. Our distributors have gone and got permission, or we um, individually have gotten permission from each individual manufacturer and to rent them. Proof that CD publishers are catching on to the idea can be seen in the store's wall decorations. Almost all the discs have labels offering them for rent, and software ads are beginning to look more and more like movie posters. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. All right, we're back with Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine, and lots of neat things you're going to show us. And what are you going to start with, Paul? Well, I'm going to start with Expresso that comes from uh, Berkeley Systems. They're the same people who do the After Dark screen savers. Now, this is a clever calendar idea. It makes a calendar out of your wallpaper. So you can get a weekly view and a monthly view. There's all kinds. It's, it's one of the cleverest calendar ideas. There's so many calendars. This is a Smart clever idea. idea. Okay? I'm interested in my family tree, genealogy, so I use Family Tree Maker from Banner Blue. I've got my whole family in it. It's very easy to enter information and trivial to get it out. You can get an ancestor tree. If I wanted to know Hobbes' relation to my daughters, all I have to do is punch mm. relationship and it tells me what it is. It also can exchange information with GEDCOM, which is the format established by the Mormon Church and used by most genealogical uh -huh. organizations. Terrific package. Okay. Uh, finally, there's Gift Maker. I guess I wouldn't be showing if it wasn't terrific, would I? Gift Maker comes from Maxis in Orinda, California. And and it's another neat idea. Now, what they've done is they've given you a drawing program with all so sorts of special effects, and you can customize a mug, a clock, a chair. Then you take the floppy disk results, you mail them to the vendor with some money or a credit card, and you get back a personalized floppy disk, uh, a canvas chair, a baseball hat. Idea. So it's a it's a per, it's a gift personalizer where you can do what you want. What's on the PC? Now this is Monty Python's complete <laughs> waste of time. And Terry <laughs> Gilliam's animation was always one of my favorite parts of Monty Python. Uh, notice now that the cursor. Uh, is being followed by the eyes of the policeman, and when I click on the policeman's eye, uh, it falls out. I mean, this is this is just this is Python at its best. Uh, it's a it's a tremendous program. And finally, I want to show uh, at After Dark Screensaver, The Simpsons is my favorite television program. We're going to look at an itchy and scratchy screensaver first. There's there's lots of different screensavers. So you see the cat and the mouse appear from behind uh, actual program groups from your program manager. Uh, it's, it's just another example. Uh, you know, p companies that come up with one good idea seem to keep coming up with other good ideas. The, the last part of this demo, uh, I'm going to show you the Homer Eats screensaver. Now, what that features is Homer Simpson coming in on the lower right here, and he actually eats the screen, whatever was on your screen the last time. Marge has just dropped off a set of pork rinds on the screen. <laughs> when Homer gets to those, he'll eat them. If she drops off tofu or vegetables or something, he'll, uh, he'll spit that back out. So that's the Simpsons uh, screensaver from uh, after, uh, Berkeley Systems, the, uh, the After Dark people. And uh, let's see, I think you have, uh, speaking of television. Well, if you like The Simpsons and you like Monty Python, that means I guess you might want to watch TV. I've got something here in which you double-click in Windows and... 
you can watch TV. This is a real window running inside Windows. I can make it larger, do anything I want with it. I can change channels right on the screen. I have all my controls here. Uh, watch a movie, a football game, or whatever else we can find on here. What's neat on here, actually, I can grab a still if I like it and save it and actually store it as a file on my hard drive. Uh, go back here. All the controls are here in software. I can actually go to full screen if I want and watch like a real TV. I can even get rid of everything in here and you can see I've got all my video controls, etc., etc. A great program and I want to shut it down here so we don't hear all this noise while I show you. The rest of what I want to show you, which is a couple other things. For kids, two neat things. Uh, putt Putt Goes to the Moon. Where's Putt Putt? There he is. This is guaranteed great game for kids. Incredible animation, an interactive TV cartoon. Absolutely haven't seen a kid yet that doesn't love it. Real quick, also for kids, what would you do at home? This is really important. Teaches kids what to do in an emergency at home when the parents aren't there. Uh, there's a fire, there's, a, there's an offensive phone call, there's a knock at the door. Uh, you forgot your key and you're locked out when you come home from school. A wonderful program for kids, what would you do at home? You have one more thing to show us, Paul. Very quickly, now this looks to the naked eye, just like a three and a half inch floppy drive. It's the right, right height and the right width, but it turns out it's, it is a three and a half inch floppy drive, but it, it's a very tiny one, the tiniest one on the market, combined with two PCM CIA card slots. So mm -hmm. the same card that provides you extra memory and disk space on your portable can be used in your desktop. This is to be inserted into the three and a half inch disk drive bay of your desktop unit, $280. And Stuart, it's so simple that I can do it. Oh my God, it's really simple. All right, Paul, lots of neat stuff. Thank you very much. And we're going to go back to Tim Bahar, and you've got a couple more goodies to show us, Tim. Right, a couple things. First of all, if you bought a, a multimedia PC for the home with a CD-ROM drive under Windows, you really need to look at the CD Essentials from Phoenix Technologies and their subsidiary Eclipse. This is a great little product that manages how you play, access, and deal with CD-ROMs. No more of this uh, having to type in setup and all of this. Uh -huh. It takes care of that for you. Really great. good. The other product is the greatest air pl paper airplane. This, you know, this is a fun product to play with. And more importantly, it's hard to understand how you make the folds without some kind of animation, etc. Right. This shows you how to do the folds, runs through a little movie, and it even shows you how it flies. So it's a good little product just on the market, the greatest paper airplane. Great for kids or grown-up guys. That's Absolutely. right. I've played with it. The other product is something from Microsoft called Magic School Bus. Now this is a part of the PBS special that is done on Saturday mornings for kids. And it takes the concept of a magic school bus, and kids jump on the magic school bus mm -hmm. and go and explore. This particular one explores the human body. All right, where are going to take us? We're going to take us to start with into the human uh, stomach. Great. We're going to look inside, and the idea is to be able to go inside the stomach as, you're, as if you're on the magic bus and explore. So what we're going to do is we're going to do normal things like uh, put the acid into the stomach and see what the digestive juices are like. Then we're going to go grab, in this case, um, a uh, hamburger and put it down and we'll see it uh, basically being dissolved in the juices <laughs> and then we'll little kids must just love the gross yeah, the grosser this, the better right? they tell me and then we can see the entire digestion process <laughs> um, the next this first one is on the human body the next one will be on space exploration and then the third one is on exploring the earth but a good new teaching tool called magic bus that's really great a couple more things i want to show before we get out of here if you've got kids or friends that are really into art, this is a wonderful bundle that's out there. You may know about Dabbler, which is the How to Draw program. Uh, right. It's a drawing program, and it teaches you how to draw. Again, with animations, it's fantastic. It's coming bundled now with this new mini Wacom drawing tablet and pen, so the kid can really draw for real. It's not playing around with a mouse and pretending you have a brush. You really do have a brush in your hand. It's a wonderful package, Dabbler and the Wacom for tablet. for artist. Yes, it really is. All right, this looks very boring, I know, but this is really a neat thing to have. These, are, these two CDs have all the residential phone books in the United States on them. 80,000 phone books here. Amazing. And if you want to go find some old college buddy, find a friend, find a lost relative or something, it's fantastic. You can look at any single phone book, search the entire country's database of phone books, uh, with a great engine in here. It's really terrific. If you're looking for a business you can't find, and I might mention we found one of the businesses we were looking for in this show, on this disc, all the business listings throughout the entire United States on one CD-ROM. May not be fun, but it's a terrific thing to have around. It comes from Digital Directory Assistance, Inc. One or two more quick little things. I want to show you this guy over here. You know, in the past, there's foreign tr language translation software for the PC, right. or these little cards you could buy that would translate words that were really dictionaries, electronic dictionaries. 
This is an actual complete translation system, huh. like the software, only in a handheld device. We don't have time to actually go through it all, but I can actually write a sentence in here, any sentence I want. It will translate in this one from English to Spanish or Spanish to English. It even comes with a speaker and earphones and a computer voice, so I can put, this, put this in the ears of the waiter and say, look, here's what I want for dinner or whatever it happens to be. Last but not <laughs> least... Now, Tim, some people who have been watching this show for a while may remember a couple years ago, <laughs> That's we right. showed off these computer suspenders, all right? We had so many calls from people who wanted to buy these suspenders, and we didn't know where they came from. I got them off a street vendor in Boston. They're now sold at the Computer Museum gift shop in Boston. So if you want these great computer suspenders, they're really cool. They come with pictures of floppy disks and PCs on them at the Computer Museum gift shop in Boston. I'm sure you can call them or write them, the computer suspenders. Thanks so much for all the neat Thank stuff you. you showed us. That's all the time we have for our annual Consumers Buying Guide show. Hope we found something that you thought was cool. And if it all went by too quickly for you, drop us a note on our CompuServe forum. We'll try to answer any questions you have on the stuff we talked about today. The CompuServe command is Go Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. See you here next time on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard. Developing technology that lets you manage your PC from anywhere on the network, anywhere in the world. HP PCs, you're taking a close look at remote management. Additional funding is provided by LaserJet printers from Hewlett Packard. Everything from a new color solution to models designed specifically for small businesses. HP LaserJet printers, you do your job, we'll do ours. And the Software Publishers Association. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated and information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a newsletter, call 1 800 800 9520 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization software legal. How would you like to communicate with your computer? A fancy new ergonomic keyboard? A digitized tablet and a pen? Or would you like to just talk to your PC and have it talk to you? Hello, I am Fred and I would like to introduce the new IDM Entry Level Workstation. The latest in speech recognition and voice synthesis on the next Computer Chronicles.